So tell me exactly what happened. Well, I got one of those emails that looked as if it came from my bank. It said I was at risk of identity theft and told me I had to log on and verify my account information. I was really worried. So what did you do? Well, I was about to reply to give them the information they wanted, but then I thought I ought to check with my bank first. So I rang my branch and they said they never sent emails like this. But it looked so realistic. It had my bank logo on it, and it had links to real websites. I've heard of that before. Apparently, it's a very common scam which everyone needs to be aware of. The first time I met Ben was at a party. We were introduced to each other by Charlie, a mutual friend, and we chatted for a few minutes. You know, we exchanged the usual pleasantries: "Where do you live? What do you do? How do you know Charlie?" That sort of thing. Then he started talking about his job. He seemed very self-centered, and that put me off a bit. But I didn't think much about it. A couple of weeks later, he phoned me and asked if I'd like to meet for a drink. I ummed and ahed a bit, and then I said, "Yeah, why not?" So we met, and he was really nice. He even said he was sorry if he'd come over as a bit arrogant at the party. I wonder if I could ask your advice. Sure. How can I help? Well, I'm going for a job interview next week, and I'm thinking about how to do my best. They've already got my CV, so they know about my qualifications, and obviously I must look my smartest at the interview and sound as intelligent as I can. Do you know all about the company? Not yet, but I'll be doing a bit of research at the weekend so that I can ask sensible questions about the kind of work I'd be doing if I got the job. Good idea. So, what are you worried about? I want them to see what I'm really like. You know, I don't want to have to pretend to be someone I'm not. That's fine. Just be yourself. I'm sure they appreciate that. Last year, I got an email telling me I'd won a mobile phone in a competition. I couldn't remember going in for a competition, but that didn't matter. I had to email my debit card details so they could charge me for the cost of shipping the phone to me. Oh, like an idiot, I made a basic mistake by giving them my card details and the address for the phone to be delivered to. Needless to say, the phone never arrived, but my bank statement showed that money was being taken out of my account. Hello, Anna. Where are you going? To play tennis, believe it or not. Can't you tell from what I'm wearing? <laughs> well, you do look as though you're going to play something, but I didn't know you played tennis. I've only just started. I don't have my own racket yet. Well, you look very smart. We must have a game sometime. Do you play tennis then? Yes, I do. In fact, I've been playing since I was eleven or twelve. Really? Are you a good player? I used to be very good, but I haven't played much recently. Great. I'll give you a ring to arrange a time. I had a pretty nasty experience on a social networking site. It started when I got a series of offensive messages. Then whoever it was said they were going to pass on private information about me if I didn't give them money. At first, I thought it might be someone in my group at college, but I didn't recognise the information on the person's profile. It was obviously a fake identity. I did think about going to the police, but in the end, I decided to ignore the whole thing and not make a fuss. Unfortunately, after a week or two, it stopped. So, if you want my advice, you shouldn't put confidential information about yourself on social networking sites.
Hi, Mary. It's Alice. I'm just ringing to say sorry for something that happened yesterday. I was in town doing some last-minute shopping and someone on the other side of the road called my name. When I looked round, I didn't see anyone I recognised, just a police officer and hundreds of shoppers. Anyway, I didn't think any more about it. Then about half an hour later, I was on the bus coming home when I suddenly remembered, your brother Jeremy joined the police last year, didn't he? It must have been him who called to me, but I just didn't recognise him in his uniform. Please apologise to him for me when you see him. Thanks. Bye. If you want my opinion, I think appearance is very important if you want to convince people that you're a serious politician. That's why I always wear a suit and tie if I'm on official business, especially if I'm in a meeting, being interviewed on television or talking to members of the public. I know there are politicians, especially the younger ones, who think it's cool to dress down. You know, jeans, open neck shirts and trainers. But for me, that's just too informal. Of course, at home with my family, I dress informally too, but never when I'm at work. It projects the wrong image.